Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. If you're looking for an idea for a tool storage cabinet, I've got one for you. I'm going to start with chisels, the most commonly used tool in the shop. They're at a convenient height, and although they may not look secure, they're held there and firmly in place. I'm going to walk you through the process, maybe give you an idea. I'm Rob Cosman, and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell, which will alert you whenever we release a new video. Anytime we use a new tool or technique, we'll leave a description down below so that make it easier for you to find. All right, let's get back to work. I have to start with a bit of history on this cabinet. The top section is still work in progress. The bottom section is actually in the process of being finished. When I designed this several years ago, I wanted to make it so that it was uh, exactly how I wanted it when I was working. So we built one prototype, um, used it for a period of time, made changes, uh, went back and used it for a period of time again, made more changes, and once settled, it'll be finished and built out of mahogany and bird's eye. As you can see in the bottom section, this section is already finished, this is near complete, and this is what I'm working on right now, so this will be next. When it came to the chisels, I wanted a way of storing them so that they were easily accessed, accessed, um, held securely in place. Traditionally, most people are, they would be held upside down and dropped down into some kind of a hole. But the problem with that is, uh, A, it's not terribly quick, and B, you have to have space available up above in order to retrieve it or to put it in. I wanted something that uh, would allow me to make best use of my space. In fact, this is pivoting so I can access my carving chisels behind it. The real secret here is to use magnets. Just the right amount of power. They're easy, it easily catches them, holds them securely, and it's just a, a real quick fit. So what we're gonna do is go through, measure, lay out for a set of seven chisels and go through the whole process, show you how I did it. You'll be able to do it. Okay, we're gonna build this using one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of material. Uh, the bottom piece is a, is a half inch plywood, Baltic birch, and I'll just give you the dimensions. It may change slightly as we go, but we're going to start off with something that is 19 by 10 and 9 sixteenths. The bottom piece of pine is 19 and a half by 2 inch by 11 sixteenths. I set that, sent that through the planer to clean it up. The two side pieces are 11 inches by 2 inches by half inch. This bottom piece, which we're going to use to drill the holes, is 2 inches wide by 18 and a half long by 3 quarter. So we're going to process that further. And this piece that uh, the ends of the chisels are going to, it's going to rest on, that too is going to be that inside dimension of 18 and a half. But we're going to resaw that and embed the magnet, the magnet so we don't see them. So the first thing I want to do is going to go in and I'm going to cut the dovetails. I'm going to do three dovetails on these two corners. Probably do two tails. If you need help on dovetails, we'll leave a link below in a video we recently did on how to cut through dovetails. And uh, as soon as we do that, then we've got to come back in and we're going to cut our rabbit out. And I thought about we could do half blinds, but that's only going to hide part of the rabbit, the rabbit that would be cut in the tail board. You still have to deal with the rabbit that's going to be cut on the pin board. And there's options, but I think the easiest way to do this is to simply cut the dovetail, then come in and carefully with the table saw, cut part of the rabbit. We'll show you how we finish it off, and then we can go ahead and assemble that section before we move on to the rest of them.
Okay, so the dovetails are cut. Now we've got to cut a rabbit all the way around the inside. Now, just so that I can bring that down to fit and not have it too short, I'm going to go with 3 16 instead of a quarter. Still going to give us plenty of, uh, plenty of glue surface. So I'm going to set my marking gauge for 3 16 of an inch. And then decide, I'm, I'm going to plane these up one pass just to get rid of some of those mill marks. But I got, I've got some marks right there from the uh, infeed roll. I'd rather have that on the bottom. So I'm going to switch these around, which means I've got to switch this one around. And that puts those ones up on the top, but these ones are a little bit worse. So we'll come along here. Scribe a line there. Scribe a line on this side. And then scribe a line. Now, this isn't going to go all the way to the end, so we best come in here and just quickly mark with a pencil where that baseline is. Now we've got to go the thickness of this, so I'm going to take it right off of the piece. Just use my marking gauge to drop that down. Lock that. I'll double check that. Okay. So that's going to come up from the bottom. And on this one, and on this one, now I'll go to the table saw and I'll make that cut, but we'll stop it shy of the end. I've gone in and set the blade to be this height, the 3 sixteenths. I put two marks on here, and by the way I do it is I just take a square edge and just move it forward until the blade no longer touches. So that's where the blade starts cutting on that side, and then back here I do the same thing, that's where it stops cutting back there. So my first cut is going to come in here, and I'm going to make this cut right along here that will go down to depth. Do that on all the pieces, now I've got to stop it because I can't come all the way through. So, knowing where my blade starts cutting, I'll come in here like this. And if you're not comfortable doing this, you can always come in and clamp a piece in there. Because as you drop that down, there's going to be some force wanting to push this piece back. However, it's pine, it's soft, and that blade's not projecting very high, so I'm confident that I can hold that. So I'm going to come in like this, drop it down there, move it through. Now on this one where I start out at the end, I'll make the cut and I'll stop when that shoulder gets to that first line. And on this one, I'll stop, I'll start it right here at that shoulder line, lining up with this. And I'll end it when that shoulder line gets to that one. Now I'm going to line this up so that that tooth is cutting right on that line, or the, pardon me, that side of the blade is cutting right on that gauge line that we struck. We get to get our height. OK, 
Okay. Now I want to back in here and do the same thing. Determine where that's making contact. My little V's and O's. So we're going to drop that down like so. And then just carry through the cut. And we'll do this one first. It's easier because we can see it. Double check, make sure that's where we want it. That can actually come out just a little bit more. That's good. Can't see my line. So what I'll do is bring it out here. Up when the shoulder line gets there. This one will drop down so the shoulder line lands on that line. Hold it securely so it doesn't allow it to kick back. Whoops, almost did that. This one we've got to change because it's a thicker piece than these. Okay, a little trial and error. Okay, that's right on. So line up that shoulder line. Now if you're doing this in hardwood, you'd be well advised to have a stop block clamp back here so as you drop that down, it can't catch it and kick it back on you. All right, now we're gonna clean these inside corners up more precisely once we actually build, uh, put this together, but I do want to stop the shaving from running, so I'm just going to come in here and chisel up to that line. Now we can put this in the vise, or in the uh, jaws, is that not going to close? There it is. Nope, it is too short. i got a small block in here. because this stuff is so easy to cut. Get the bulk of it out of the way with chisel. Use your chisel upside down. That way the bevel allows you to control the depth of cut. And we'll get it close. Then we'll come in with our router plane. Set that down so we have the proper depth. Snug it up. And that'll allow us to come in here and just finish that cut. Careful when you're coming up against this side wall that you don't damage it. 
Now, just before we assemble these, and by the way, just so I re-emphasize this, the reason I didn't, one of the reasons I didn't cut this all the way back to where it's eventually going to be, because remember, when we assemble this joint, we've got to cut up into this corner. The more we take off of here, the more fragile it's going to make that during assembly. So far better to go in and do it after the fact. And the last thing we want to do before we put it together is decide how we're going to treat these top corners. So if you're going to have this so that it mounts up in like that, we're going to want to put a radius on there. So I'm just going to use a can of, uh, off a thing of pellets to come in here and, and I'm going to go right from here. So we'll just trace that. Could use a compass too. I'll cut that on the bandsaw, trim it off, and then I'm going to use that to do the other one so that they're both identical. Okay, I'm just quickly going to plane the inside surface of each of these pieces. Okay, to get this corner, I simply came in and uh, I started here actually. So the grain is running like this of the material that needs to be removed. So rather than come in and try to take it this way, which may encourage a split, if you come in here and just take multiple little chops until you get right to the back wall, and then I use the chisel referencing against the existing cut and just come out there and walk that chisel tip down to extend that line right on onto here. And then I'll just come in and clean up this end back wall by extending that line like so. Come in and clean out the bottom. Now, we, I just gave this a quick sanding just to clean it up. We'll see how it fits, see if there's one side better than the other. I think I'll put this side down, this one that's gonna show. Now, it doesn't quite fit, so it's proud by you know, just a little bit. And it's an easy cut since it's pine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my small router plane. It's easier to manage. I'm actually going to go in and see if I can't reference it off of this corner, which seems to be the deepest, if that is actually a problem. And then I'll carefully balance this and go all the way around. It's not a lot of material to be removed. Okay, so I don't end up dealing with a lot of squeeze out. I'm gonna put glue right in the corner. That's gonna take a whole lot. Spread this a little bit so it doesn't push it all to the bottom. Now, I need to put a couple clamps here and here just to hold that in position. able to pull that in so I'm going to put a strip of quarter by quarter just like that and then that should apply enough pressure over that small area to pull that tight on the other side. It's 
need to go this way. Trying to get that clamp at the point where it will balance and stay on that narrow call with a pad on it. Okay, just take a quick peek inside. That's good and tight. I'm going to use cups and half inch magnets, which is a little more powerful than you need, but it's all I have right now, so we can do it. But the way we're going to do it will tame the power a little bit. Um, and I'm going to cut those holes with a fish 5 8 inch bit, which is expensive, but it cuts a nice clean hole through any wood. So that's going to be the top piece, and this is going to be the bottom piece. What we're going to do is we're going to cut all the way through this and then slice off whatever amount we want. And when I say whatever amount we want, I want to capture the aluminum cap so it's almost entirely in the hole. And I'm doing this so I don't have that ugly pilot hole to look at. But the first thing we have to do is determine where this way we need to put it. So if my chisel is going to sit like that on a piece of 5 inch, 5 8 inch material, if I take a rule and hold that and see where it makes contact with the end of that. It's about 9 16 but I'm going to go 5 8 just to give me a little bit of room so I'm not bottoming out against the plywood back on the holder. So we'll mark up get a pencil that works. A little sharper. We'll come up 5 8 of an inch from the bottom and mark a line. All along there. Now, this is 18 and a half, so that's the inside dimension, plus or minus a little bit, but we'll fit it afterwards. We've already determined that we're going to have our chisel space two and a half inches apart, so that pair of dividers is set for two and a half inches, and that leaves us an inch and three quarter on either end. So we'll come in from the end with this one and make a mark. That would be our first chisel, and then we'll go along and we'll make a mark at each two and a half interval. And that last one should give us inch and three quarter. Now, we're going to do the same thing for the top piece. 
So what I'll do is just use my square to transfer those marks. Obviously we want them to line up, although it's not crucial since it's going to be a magnet. So when we set that chisel in, I want it to sit and rest right on the top of that hole so that it doesn't slide around sideways. So what I'm going to do is cut a piece off of this that is the thickness that matches the thickness of this cap from the end right to there. And that looks to be 3 eighths of an inch. So we'll cut this 3 eighths thick and then our width is going to be, uh, it's just under an inch and a half, so we'll cut it an inch and nine sixteenths and then trim it accordingly. Once the glue's dry, we can take the clamps off, we'll trim that piece to fit in there. Of course, we'll plane the pencil marks off and the saw marks off and then clamp that in place and glue it. Okay, now for the top piece, we're gonna do it a little bit different. I was going to cut that piece off and glue it back on, but we don't need to. So the cup needs a quarter of an inch and we want to finish off with 7 16 So what we'll do is we'll drill in a quarter of an inch from this side and then we'll, just for the sake of having a little extra material to work with, then we'll rip this 7 16 That'll give us our, our little uh, 3 16 buffer. We'll drop the, mag the magnets in the cups in from behind and then that's going to be glued onto the plywood piece which will hold everything in place and never see the magnets and it'll just buffer that strength a little bit so it's not so hard to pull the magnets off or pull the chisels off back So we want 7 16 I'm going to give it just a little bit more. That'll allow me to clean up the saw marks. Let's just do a quick test to make sure that there's enough power. So magnet side down. Yeah, that might be a little weak. So we have two options. If we make this any thinner, then it's not going to sit properly. But what we can do is go drill that a little bit deeper, which will allow the magnet to pull itself toward the surface when the chisel is put in there. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to drill that down, oh, maybe another sixteenth of an inch. I re-drilled these holes to be five sixteenths of an inch deep and the result is and that's in place so if it was here sliding by it'll hold it that's good and I think I'll put I'll put a little bit of super glue in there just so that those aren't rattling around each time you lift it up Okay. 
Now, we've got some glue in there. Just get rid of that real quick. This one's okay. In fact, instead of trying to get rid of that, what I'm just going to do is cut a little chamfer. Didn't start out there, so you won't see it. Keep that up just a little bit. While we're pushing it in. And then we can pull it down. All right, that's good and tight on the back. Okay, while that's drying, we can fit this. Same thing. A little more blade. Let's make sure that that's going to fit. Yep, just like that. Now, just to be sure, that works. So let's put those magnets in place and we'll just drop a just put a drop of cyanacrylate glue Okay, our last move. Now, before I put this in, I'm just gonna go in there. Well, that's out of my way. Actually, well, I'll wait till the clamps are off, and then I'll go in there and just clean up that little bit of glue squeeze out that we had in there. And then we'll glue that in place and try it out. Just a little at the bottom, I don't want to squeeze out. Now put that in place. Now I've got a piece of plywood that's the same width. I'll put that in there. Just some lines in here from the plane or from the jointer. That one's okay. Anyway, just come in there. You can do a radius if you want, just by tilting the plane with each pass, or I'm just gonna cut a 45 degree chamfer. Okay, let's see how they fit. It's lots of space. Could have been a little bit closer together, actually, but lots of room to go in there and reach. So if you want, <clears throat> and you're going to make put this in your, into your tool cabinet where you're raising, raising that up or folding it up in order to get access to underneath, then you just go ahead and put whatever you're going to pivot it with, whether it's screws or dowels. Otherwise, you can just hang that on your wall or in your tool cabinet. And there you got a way of keeping securely holding seven IBC chisels. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, 
click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. Now I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools that we actually manufacture right here, as well as our workshops, both in person and online. Good luck.